Hello, 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 hello. This is Father Adam Kotas, a Roman Catholic priest, coming to you live from Las Vegas. <sighs> I hope that you are having a fantastic, fantastic day. And I wish you always the very best. And I'm coming to you with the joy and the hope that comes from our faith. Chapter 22 of the Gospel of Luke in the Bible has Jesus speaking to Simon Peter before Simon Peter denies Jesus three times when the cock crows. And Jesus says the following to Simon Peter. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you so that your faith may not fail you. And when you come back, strengthen your brothers. In this life. The promise of Jesus is not if we come back, but when we come back. My Facebook page, the one with 3.5 million followers and the blue check mark was hacked about three months ago and I had no access to the page. This was something that was promised that would happen by the authorities of the church in Las Vegas and in Santa Rosa, the Roman Catholic Church authorities, who told me that they would stop at nothing in order to destroy me and my ability to communicate with all of you because Satan has a lot of helpers. And he has a lot of religious helpers. And the religious people, they don't want you, many of them, to hear the truth of the gospel and the word of God. And so they thought that they had destroyed Adam Kotas and his ability to communicate with you. But I'm back! Because that is the promise of Jesus. Jesus says to Peter, Peter, who is going to deny him in chapter 22 of Luke's gospel. He will deny that he even knew him and the cock crows. And Jesus predicts this. And Jesus says to him, Simon, Simon, I have prayed for you because Satan is asking for you. I have prayed that your faith may not fail you. But when you come back, because in this life, in this life of faith, it is not if we come back, it's when we come back. When we come back, get it into your head that that is the promise of Jesus, that you will always come back. That is faith. Faith is there with the promise that you will always return. You will always come back. Jesus returned from the dead. Jesus was killed and crucified by religious people. But he came back and he resurrected. And Adam Kotas uh, has been killed a lot of times. You know, the new rumors that are out there that I'm dead, right? Mm, I've been killed a lot of times. But I always resurrect. I always come back because of the power of the one that is in me, Jesus Christ, who is alive. And that same Jesus Christ is alive in your life. And no matter what tragedy, no matter what problem you are going through, no matter what suffering you are going through, no matter the enemies that you have, you will always come back. Because it's not if we come back, but when we come back. And then we have to strengthen our brothers. Jesus says that in Luke chapter 22. Strengthen your brothers. Give them faith. That's what I'm doing. That is my mission in life to strengthen you, to give you that dose of faith. What is faith? Faith is the ability to relax. 
Now, we relax because we don't have any problems? No, we have problems. And we have big problems. But our God is much bigger than any big problem we have. Your God is much bigger than any problem you have. I've come back. My Facebook has come back. No matter my enemies. Hmm? Because I always come back. That's my life. Hmm? And you will come back too. So what is your issue right now? What is it that you're going through right now? Is it cancer? Is it your depression? Is it your anxiety? Is it the fact that you don't have enough work in your life? You're underemployed? What is the issue in your life? What are you going through in your own life right now? Is it that you discovered that your husband or your wife is cheating on you? Is it that you discovered that your kids are on drugs? Is it that you feel lonely? You feel like you're unloved, unwanted? What is it in your own life? What are you going through? You lost a loved one? I just talked with Lourdes yesterday. Her first grandchild died two days ago. They're going through hell, aren't they, right now as a family? She's going through hell. Her daughter's going through hell. And I told her the same thing that I want to tell you. You will come back. Because that's the promise of our faith. You will come back. Hmm? So you have to realize that every single night experience in our life, every single dark experience in our life is permitted by God. Hmm? So we know that from the first chapter of the book of Job. Job, who is having a great life and Satan is out there idle. And God says to Satan, well, how come you're not busy tempting somebody? Putting someone to the test. That's temptation, to put someone through the test. And Satan says to God, well, I can't tempt people because you have them protected. You have them covered. You have them shielded. And God says to Satan, well, I will take my protection off of Job so that you can tempt him, so that you can put him to the test. But you will not harm him. You will do him no harm. And Satan does all these things to Job with the permission of God. Because even Satan has to play on God's playground. Satan cannot do anything to you if it isn't with the explicit permission of God. Because God is more powerful than the devil. So if you are going through a cross, if you're going through a problem, if you're going through something in your life, if you're going through hell in your life, whatever you are going through in your life is permitted by God for something bigger. God is setting you up for something bigger in your life. There is a higher purpose to everything that you go through in life. That is why a life of faith has nothing to do with believing in God. You know, religious people, they believe in God. And so what? What is that? Does that help him in anything, in any way? Huh? I mean, even Satan believes in God. The devil believes in God. People of faith trust God. It's Jesus, I trust in you, not Jesus, I believe in you. Okay? So in this life, it's not about having big faith. It's about having small faith with big trust. I have small faith. My faith is small, but Jesus said that. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can tell the mulberry tree to move and the tree will be uprooted. You can tell the mountain to move and the mountain will move. Small faith, even as small as a mustard seed, but with big trust that God has a purpose, that every single trial and tribulation and obstacle and problem and darkness in your life is there for a purpose, for a higher purpose, and it will all be okay. You know, I was uh, reflecting. When I was in the seminary, I was not abused when I was in the seminary. None of the priests 
who took advantage of their power and their position while I was in the seminary to abuse seminarians, take advantage of them. None of them abused me when I was in the seminary. Why? Because I weighed 325 pounds when I was in the seminary. I wasn't always this good looking. Hmm? I weighed 325 pounds. And in December of 2020, it was revealed that a number of the priests of the seminary where I went to took advantage of their power and their position and were abusing seminarians. You can Google this information. St. Cyril and Methodius Seminary in Orchard Lake, Michigan, where I finished in December of 2020. This is all over the news. And I called one of my friends who is a priest in Connecticut and I said to him, how come this didn't happen to me when I was in the seminary? How come none of these priests took advantage of me and raped me or abused me? When I was in the seminary, why didn't this happen to me? And he says to me, why are you so stupid? He says, you were well protected. You were protected. You weighed 325 pounds. You think they were interested in somebody your size? A light bulb came on in my head. God was protecting me. What I saw is a curse because I saw the fact that I was fat in the seminary. I saw that as a curse. And I said, why God, why can't I lose weight? Because I tried every single diet in the world and nothing would work. And I said, why isn't this working? Why can't I lose weight? And God was using that to protect me because if something like that had happened to me, if I had been abused when I was in the seminary, I would not have survived that. Hmm? I know I would have taken my life. Like three of my friends, seminarians, when I was in the seminary, one of them in particular, a classmate of mine, Marcin Kozłowski, you can Google his name. He took his life. He, he hung himself. Another one threw himself from a big building. Hmm? That would have happened to me. I know it. God, pro God was protecting me. And I didn't see it. What I saw as a darkness and as a curse was a blessing. I was just talking to a 24-year-old young man who has cancer of the bone. His family brought him to see me from Los Angeles. They came to see me in Las Vegas where I live. They came to see me in Las Vegas. And I'm talking to him and I said, oh, how terrible it is that you got cancer. And he says, no, Father Adam. No, it is because of this cancer that I know that I am loved. Because before I got cancer, I thought my parents didn't love me. And now my father even quit his job to take care of me. He has to even wipe my behind because I can't do it anymore. So if I die, he says, I will die loved. Whereas I was not loved before, I didn't feel loved before. Do you understand? God has a purpose for every single cross that happens in our life. God has a purpose and God has a purpose to your cross in your life. How many marriages have been saved by the infidelity that they've experienced? They were, you know, going through hell before the husband cheated on the wife or the wife cheated on the husband, they were not even, they were never talking. He was working 20, uh, 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day. They had no communication. And then boom, the cheating happened. And it was an opportunity for them to renew their marriage, to save their marriage. How many people have had their lives saved through a DUI? I know a man who got a DUI. He was an alcoholic. His wife was going to divorce him. And then he got a DUI. I mean, the police pulled him over and gave him a DUI. And then he had to go to the judge. And the judge made him go into an AA program. That DUI saved his life. That darkness saved his life. 
that cross saved his life. Every single cross in our life leads to the resurrection. Every single cross in our life. I'm getting too excited right now and my phones are falling over and everything. You know, when I'm going to be in a church and very soon I'm going to be in a church. Hmm? I'm going to have a church in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yep. So stay tuned because the best is yet to come. Huh? And I know, you know, they're all, they're all, everybody's got enemies. And believe me, I have a lot of enemies. And they're talking, and they're always talking. And I have some powerful enemies, like, you know, look at what they just tried to do with my Facebook, especially the religious ones. Because religious people hate me. You know that. Hmm? They hate me. Because I'm not about religion. I'm about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, you know, and they, they make up stuff because people love to make up things. And they're making up things, and they're saying, and they're, they're even publicizing letters. You know, they're saying, oh, he's not a priest. I'm a priest forever. I will always be a priest. The priesthood is something that can never be taken away from me by anybody. Nobody can ever take the priesthood away from me. Once a man is ordained a priest in the Roman Catholic Church, he is a priest forever, whether he likes it or not. And nobody can take the priesthood away from me. Hmm? Nobody. And, you know, they're making up things and they're saying, well, you know, he changed religions. He's no longer Catholic. He's Lutheran now. Or he's an evangelical now. Or he's a Protestant now. I'm as Catholic as I ever was, and even more now than I've ever been before, and I will never change religion, ever. Hmm? And they can throw me out of an institution, but they will never throw me out of the church. I will be Catholic, Roman Catholic, whether they like it or not. And they can have this one. Mm. Mm. the way you have to live your life too with your enemies don't let people destroy you don't let religious people destroy you who make up things about you hmm? so you can have religion but you won't have Jesus a lot of people have religion but they do not have Jesus they are blind look at the acts of the apostle the apostle Paul he's on the road to Damascus and he's blinded he's thrown off whatever he's like on a horse or something and he's thrown off of the horse let's just say it was a horse there's no mention of a horse but i'm just for the sake of this story i gotta tell it like this okay so he he gets thrown off of the horse and jesus speaks to him and he can't see and paul was a pharisee he was killing christians and jesus says to him why are you persecuting me he was blinded in order to see you have to first be blinded you have to go through a a, a, a dark experience because every single night is a sign of the dawn to come that there's light coming and so paul was blinded he couldn't see he was in the darkness and then he saw because before that he had religion paul the apostle paul he had religion but he did not have jesus he didn't have god he had religion and there's a lot of people who have religion but they do not have god you know, I was one of those people. Before 2018, I was all about protecting the institution. I was just a functionary of the institution of the Roman Catholic Church. I was a Roman Catholic priest, and I was all about protecting the institution. I could care less about protecting you. And in 2018, I was sexually abused and raped by a priest of Las Vegas. He took me by... Uh, making up things and by um, grooming me because he's a predator he took me on a trip to California he used his power and his position over me and there he put something in my drink and he took advantage of me and after that I told the authorities of the Church of Las Vegas I told the bishops and the two vicars in Las Vegas about what happened to me and they blamed me for what happened they told me, well, you couldn't, you, there's no way you, you could be abused. You're an adult. And not only that, we know that you're gay. Hmm? We know. But how do you know? I mean, I don't tell people my sexual orientation. What does that have to do with anything? Hmm? Well, by the way you act, with your mannerisms and everything, we know. And people like you, they can't be abused. And they didn't believe. 
believe me and they blamed me for it and they instilled shame in me and they told me if you ever tell anybody what happened to you we will make sure that you never get to be a priest in the church and they filled me with fear and they filled me with shame and that then that then uh, that then that then caused me to develop an eating disorder hmm? that then caused me to develop an eating disorder hmm? and because of the eating disorder i almost died and it wasn't until i lost the shame and the fear that I was able to get better. It's very hard for me to talk about this, but I do in order to show you because I was trying to figure out why is it that God had me go through this experience? God had me go through this experience in order for my blindness to be cured. Because now I'm a priest for you. And I protect you, not an institution. I was just a functionary. I was going through the motions. I was not converted. You know, the word conversion in Greek is the word metanoia, to change the way you think. Meta is the word uh, higher. Uh, meta, like um, metamorphosis, uh, metaphysics, above, okay? And nous is the word mind. So to have a conversion is to change the way you think, to change your mind. And I certainly had a conversion. And what a way for God to get me to have a conversion, right? To change my mind. To change the way I was living. Because it used to be all in my life, it was all about an institution. And I was so afraid I was afraid of these powerful bishops because they said, you know, we're going to take your priesthood away from you. And they instilled fear in me. Now it's all about you. Now I'm a priest for you. I was a priest for an institution, but now I'm a priest for the people of God. Every single dark experience in our life Everything you go through in your life has a purpose. There is no cross that you go through in your life that does not have a higher purpose. God knows what God is doing. God knows what God is doing. If God allowed his son Jesus Christ to go through a cross in his life, what makes you think God will not allow you to go through a cross in your life? Do you understand? And we don't want the cross. We don't like crosses. We don't like dark experiences. But those dark experiences are necessary to come to the resurrection. There is no resurrection without the cross. No resurrection without the cross. That's why Paul says, let me not glory, but in the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. It's the cross. It's all about the cross in our life. And God has a purpose. As God has a purpose for the cross that I went through in my life, God has a purpose for the cross in your life. How many families have been reconciled in the hospital room when the mother is dying? The siblings hadn't been talking to each other and the mother is dying and now they've come together. Mm -hmm. They've come together. They're talking again through the cross of that experience. How many parents have been saved and how many families have been saved through the drug addiction of their child? The son or the daughter gets addicted to drugs 
and the parents begin to realize that the way that they have been living their life, working 12 hours, 14 hours a day, has been ruining their family. That the reason why their children are on drugs is because they've been absent parents. Hmm? That they need to change as a family. And so they use that dark experience of drug addiction to wake up and to change. Do you understand why God allows dark experiences in our life? And it will all be fine. Everything is going to be just fine. I'm about to celebrate my 40th birthday. I'm going to be 40 this year. I know it's hard to believe because I look so good. Um, It's just, it's so hard to believe. Because I just, I know. It's very hard to believe. I haven't had any work done, okay? (laughs) People always ask me, have you had any work done? I'm not that stupid, okay? (laughs) I'm not that stupid. To have work done, okay? It's People say, well, what do you put on your face to look so good? It's called lard. <laughs> My grandmother puts lard on her face. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm getting off subject here. But I'm going to be celebrating my 40th birthday, and all of you are invited to my birthday. I'm going to tell you where. My birthday is on uh, November 15. It's a Friday. Come to Las Vegas. It's going to be Friday and Saturday. Friday the 15th, I'm going to celebrate Mass. I'll tell you the church uh, very soon that I'm going to be in. I'm going to be announcing, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm going to celebrate Mass on the 15th for my birthday. And then the 16th, we're going to have a big celebration too because that's a Saturday. Okay? So 15th and 16th of November. I can't wait to celebrate my birthday. Why do I celebrate my birthday? Because I'm pro-life. That's why. Mm -hmm. And it all only gets better. Mm. And I don't need gifts. Don't bring me any gifts. I don't need money. I don't need anything. I need you. You are my gift. You know, Adam and Eve, when they were thrown out of paradise, they didn't get to take anything from paradise. They only got to take one gift out of heaven. What was that gift? Each other. Adam and Eve only got to take each other. Hmm? So stay tuned. Follow me on my Facebook. Please share this live so that everybody knows Father Adam Kotas is back on Facebook. He's back. Because it's not if we come back. It's when we come back. And I've come back. For I always come back. No matter how many times I've been killed. I always come back. I always resurrect. And no matter how many times your enemies kill you, you will always come back. That has to be your attitude. That you always come back. Always, because you've got God with you. And if God is for me, the Bible says, who can be against me? For I can do anything, anything through him who strengthens me. You're going to be just fine. Hmm? Everything is going to be okay, A-OK. You'll be just fine. Let me drink some water. Excuse me, it's just water. Hmm. This early in the morning, it's just water. Mm. So share this live and let everybody know. Make a post. Father Adam is back. He's on Facebook. And soon and very soon, he's going to be in a church in Las Vegas. And so we got to stay tuned because then we're going to go and see him in Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva, viva Las Vegas. (laughs) How is everybody doing today? Are you all doing okay? Are you doing well? You are? So am I. Okay, because it always gets better. That's faith. If you've got Jesus, it always gets better. 
Everything is going to be just fine. I know that you're going through a lot. I know you are, okay? But it's all going to be okay. You'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. You will be just fine. Don't worry about it. Worry less. Do you know how many times the phrase, do not be afraid, is in the Bible? 365 times. You think God has a message for us? Hmm? Do not be afraid. Everything will be just fine. Fear is paralyzing. Fear and shame. That's what you have to lose in order to live a life of faith. You have to lose your fear and your shame. You know, I was so afraid. From 2018 on, I was so afraid and I made a lot of mistakes because of fear. I was so afraid that they were going to take the priesthood from me. Well, they can't because I'm a priest forever. That's the, the teaching of the Roman Catholic faith. The teaching of the Roman Catholic Church is that once you are ordained a priest, you are a priest forever. And of course, they don't like it. The bishops of Las Vegas, they don't like it. The bishop of Santa Rosa and all, you know, all of my enemies, they hate that. Because they would love to have the ability to take the priesthood from me. To unmake me a priest. But they don't have it. They can't. Because the priesthood comes from Jesus. And the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church is that once a priest is ordained, once you are made a priest, you're, you're a priest forever. It's one of the three sacraments of the seven sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church that leaves an indelible mark on your soul. That means it can never be erased. So I am a priest forever, whether they like it or not. And obviously they don't like it. Too bad. Mm? Mm. Mm. That's the attitude. And that is the attitude that you have to have with regards to your enemies in your life as well. And you've got a lot of your enemies. Now, in your life, just like in mine, you have to protect yourself from who? From your friends? No. Yes. From your so-called friends because you think they're your friends a lot of people say i got to protect myself from my enemies <laughs> better yet protect yourself from those who pretend to be your friends two-faced people who say one thing to your face but then put a knife in your back huh like your family who is it that has hurt you the most in your life your family, the, the people who love you the most are the people who hurt you the most. Your so-called friends. And how do we protect ourselves? We protect ourselves with the medal of St. Benedict. The medal of St. Benedict. You protect yourself with the medal of St. Benedict. Where do I get this from? From Father Gabriele Amort. Okay? The official exorcist of Rome. There's a movie about him on Netflix, or you could get it on YouTube too. The Pope's Exorcist. And he talks about how do we protect ourselves from jealousy and envy and our enemies. The Medal of St. Benedict. These are blessed and exercised medals and they're available on adamkotas.com on my website. You can go and get everything there. Okay? adamkotas.com. These I brought back from Mexico, these medals. I have 17 metals here that will protect you from the evil eye, from negative energy. Everything is on my website, adamkotas.com. Mm? You have to protect yourself. You have to. You don't have a choice because there's a lot of people who want to destroy your life. Mm? You know, my birthday is coming up on the 15th of November. I remember when I first got to Las Vegas. My birthday fell on a uh, Sunday and I got up in the morning and I was so happy because it was my birthday. And I go to the kitchen and the pastor of the church where I was at, he comes to the kitchen 
And I thought he was going to wish me a happy birthday. But he comes into the kitchen and he says, Don't you dare tell people that it's your birthday today. Don't you dare. I prohibit it. And he was the big pastor. Huh? You know, pastor rhymes with bass. Oh, I won't say it. Okay. <laughs> huh? Yeah. That's how people are. Hmm? He killed my energy. Because he didn't bless me. He cursed me. And there's a lot of people in this life who dedicate themselves to cursing you. Who want to rob you of your energy. Don't let them. I've gotten to this point because I'm about to turn 40 this year. I know you can't believe it because I look so good. But I am going to turn 40, 40 this year. I know you can't believe it. I know it. I know people don't believe that I'm going to turn 40. I know it because I just look so good. I can't help it. Uh, <laughs> And I'm humble about it, too. Oh, I'm so humble about it. <laughs> oh, it's just so painful to be so good looking. But, um... <laughs> I mean, have you seen all these women who are, like, all over me all the time? And they're, like, like hugging me and everything. I mean, I just... Uh, my grandmother always says to me, you got to protect yourself from all these... From all these Jezebels. <laughs> but anyway, what was I talking about? I forgot what I was... I lose my strain of thought. You know, it's... it's, It just... Oh, it's my birthday. My birthday is on November 15th. And I'm going to have a big celebration here in Las Vegas. November 15th and 16th. So plan on coming because everybody's invited. You're all invited because you live in my heart. And you do not pay rent, okay? You do not pay rent. You live in my heart, and you didn't. And you do not pay rent. And I was going to talk about something with regards to, uh, with regards to a birthday, and I have completely lost my strain of thought because I got focused. I lost my my focus because I just looked at the screen and I just couldn't believe how good I look. Um, <laughs> Even at 40. But now that I'm 40, I have realized that I cannot let these people get to me. These enemies of mine. And you've got enemies too. And you cannot allow them to get to you. Hmm? Resist them. Solid in your faith. And you got to protect yourself from all these people who want to destroy you. Hmm? I've got a lot of enemies. You have a lot of enemies. And we're not going to allow them to destroy our life. We keep going. Because that's how it is in life. you got to keep going. I mean, obviously you fall. It's part of life. I've fallen so many times. But if you don't fall, you, you can't get up. So everything is going to be just fine. I love you very much. You're in my heart and you do not pay rent. Go to my website, adamkotas.com. Stay tuned. Share this live. Share the video. Very soon I'm going to be announcing um, the new church that I'm going to be in in Las Vegas. I'm going to be announcing it because I need, I need to have a church because I miss you so much. I miss having Mass. I miss being in church with people. I miss preaching in front of people. I mean, it's one thing to be on social media, but I gotta have, I have to have a church. Hmm? It just, yeah. You know, I don't hear from one ear. Do you know that? I don't like to tell people from which ear I don't hear because then they want to go to confession to that side of my 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 face okay so I don't hear from one ear and the reason why I don't hear from one ear is because I was born in 1984 and the Chernobyl disaster the nuclear plant exploded in 1985 and it was hidden the Soviets hid it so all the kids who were my age were sick in my hometown and the doctor gave medicine to all the kids 
gentamicin, a powerful antibiotic. And all of the kids in my hometown that are around my age are all completely deaf. They cannot hear from both ears. All of the kids except one, me. I am the only one who can hear from one ear. And if it wasn't for this one ear that God saved, I wouldn't be able to preach. And all of my life, I would complain to God and I would say, Why God? Why did you allow this? Why? Until finally a light bulb hit. It's because of the fact that I don't hear from one ear that I have an exaggerated laughter. And my laughter has been used by God to lift up so many spirits of people, to lift up so many people. Hmm? How many people are lifted up by my laughter? Then my brain, one side of my brain has been more developed than the other. The part of the brain that is responsible for artistic abilities. So, you know the way I am. I'm so artistic and all of that. And the, the fact that um, I speak so many languages, I can learn a language like that. I can, I can read something and then it just like, I get it. All of that is because I don't hear from one ear. God used this. God used this seeming curse to bless me so that I can bless you. Do you get it? God has a purpose. Nothing happens in this life without the hand of God. God knows what God is doing. Whatever you are going through, it is all part of the great plan of God. Trust God. It will all be better. Because it always gets better. Night is only a sign of the dawn to come. That morning is coming. And morning is coming to Father Adam Kotas. With me opening a church in Las Vegas. Hmm? Morning has come with my Facebook coming back. I'm resurrecting. Hmm? It only gets better. Morning is coming. Night only endures for a while. But the morning will come. That is the promise of our faith. That it only gets better. You'll be just fine. Everything will be just fine. You're going to be just fine. You know, people ask me all the time. They say, well, how come... You're talking about that the morning will come. Well, I've been dealing with this problem for such a long time. Why isn't God acting? Because God lives in God's time and you live in your time. God lives in Kairos time. Kairos is this theological concept that God doesn't have calendars, years, months, days. God is pure existence. We have calendars and days. God lives outside of the time that we live in as people. So God will act in God's time because God answers every single prayer in His time, not in our time. That's why you got to trust. Do you know these past three months have just been hell for me? When my Facebook got hacked and, and you know I, I had no ability to communicate with you, through Facebook. I had to be on TikTok. That's why it's so important that you are not just on my Facebook, but that you are also on my TikTok, that you follow my TikTok at Adam Kotas Direct with 1.7 million followers on TikTok. My Facebook, 3.5 million followers with the blue check mark on TikTok, the blue check mark, and that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, 585,000 followers. And growing, and it's going to grow more because you're going to go and you're going to subscribe and you're going to tell your family and friends to subscribe as well because we're sharing the good news that people can use. I know that this is good news. 
and that you can use it in your life. That's why we got to share this good news because sharing is caring. Hmm? And go to my website, adamkotas.com. Always stay tuned to more information, more good news because the best is yet to come. Hmm? You know, I got, I got through this night. I got through other nights in my life before and I'm going through this night and I will get through this night and the morning will come because the morning always comes. That's faith. That is the ability to relax and to say, God is making something new, something better. Mm -hmm. Better. See, we just have to do our best in this life. And when we do our best, God does the rest. When you do your best, God does the rest. That's faith. God is doing the rest. See, God is working in your life. Everything is going to be just fine. Don't give up. Keep the faith and stay tuned. Because Father Adam is <sighs> resurrecting. Oh my gosh. The stone has been rolled away. The stone has been rolled away from the tomb. I can already see the light. I'm almost out there. Outside of the tomb, okay? <laughs> I love you very much. I hope you're all doing super well. Keep smiling. Remember, the devil cannot laugh. Keep your sense of humor. You like these rosaries? They're on my website. You can get them. You can get everything on adamkotas.com. Every single rosary I have touched, everything that I send you, it's blessed personally by me blessed and exercised for you, okay? And stay tuned. There's going to be more announcements to come. And do help me. You can. What can we do for you, Father Adam? Can we send you money? No! Can we send you stuff? No, I don't need anything from you. Material. I need you. Come visit me in Las Vegas once I announce where, okay? So stay tuned. Make plans to come and visit me. Make plans to come for my birth date. I'd love to give you a hug. I have time for everybody. I always have time for you. Always. Mm -hmm. I'd love to give you a hug, to bless you. You can even kiss me on the cheek, okay? First, brush your teeth, okay? Wear perfume. <laughs> Wear deodorant. <laughs> Oh, the stories I could tell. Sometimes I do. Anyway, uh, make plans to come and celebrate my birthday. I'd love for you to be here. Okay. I'm, I'm live right now. I'm live on Facebook. I'm live on TikTok. I'm, this video is, um, it's in its entirety. It's always on my YouTube channel at Adam Kotas Direct. Okay. So what can you do? You can share. You can share this video. That's the number one thing. And then post on Facebook that Adam uh, Kotas is back on Facebook. Okay, he's got his Facebook back. Stay tuned. If for some reason you unfollowed him, follow him back. Okay, Father Adam is back and here to stay. Mm. May God bless you. Let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, our souls inspire. Enlighten us, your celestial fire. For if you are with us, nothing else matters. We want to feel that fire of your love, O Holy Spirit. Come and enkindle in us, your Holy Spirit. Make us feel okay, O Lord, for you are with us. And you make everything new. Mm. When we go through darkness, oh Lord, we want to feel, we want to feel that it's just the sign of the new dawn to come, of the light to come. And when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for you are with us. And we follow that light in the tunnel, and we walk, for we are not stuck. We are walking, and that means there's going to be an end to the walk. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I bless you today and always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And make sure you pray Psalm 23. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says I walk. So we are walking. We're not stuck. You're going to be just fine. You're walking. That means there's going to be an end. Okay? I love you. Share the video. Tell everybody Father Adam is back on Facebook. And back. And come and visit me in Las Vegas. Come and visit me in Las Vegas.